Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today we're going to install Ubuntu Linux in a triple boot configuration on this machine. Now, I have already installed Mac OS X and Windows 10 on this machine on two separate drives using what's called UEFI. If you're curious what that means, check it out. It's just a, a different way to boot multiple systems. If you're curious about the uh, installation process for Mac OS X or Windows 10, check out the description uh, down below. I have links to both of those installation videos. But for now, let's continue on with the Ubuntu install. I'm going to download Ubuntu Desktop. And they want you to donate, but you don't have to. So not now. Take me to the download. There's our download coming in. We'll speed this up for time's sake. One thing I have noticed with these Ubuntu downloads is that sometimes they hang. So you can cancel that one and try it again if it hangs. Just want to make sure that this little progress bar continues on. OK, now that we have Ubuntu ISO for 16.04 LTS, let's go ahead and grab Rufus. We're going to use Rufus to write this to our USB stick. That's what Rufus looks like. And we'll grab the download. OK, we're going to pick our USB device. That's the only one that we have. Uh, I think that most of the time this defaults to MBR. So we're going to set this to GPT because we are doing UEFI. Uh, the file system in this case doesn't matter because we're going to be using an ISO. The volume label, let's call it Ubuntu. And let's go ahead and pick our ISO image. Um, if that says DD, change it to ISO. So there's our Ubuntu image that we just downloaded. And let's click Start. And you'll notice that that sets the new volume label automatically. We're going to write the ISO image. OK. OK, now that worked for me this time, which is weird, because the first time I tried this, it didn't work. If you get an error in this process, what you need to do is go to Device Manager, and you need to find your USB drive. In my case, it's this generic multi-card USB device. Right-click and click on left-click on Properties here. Then go to Policies, Better Performance, and click OK. And then retry writing with Rufus, and it should work the second time around. But for some reason, it worked for me that time. OK, so the next step is going to be to reboot F12, UEFI generic multi-card. OK, so this time, uh, in order to see the actual menu uh, on the NVIDIA card, we're going to press E on the Install Ubuntu option. This is for Edit. And then we're going to come down here to the Linux line, and we're going to hit the End key on the keyboard so that we're all the way out at the end. And we're going to type in Nouveau mode set equals zero. Dot mode set equals zero. And then we're going to hit F10 to reboot. And this just makes the video driver compatible with the NVIDIA card. I don't know how it works, but it, it works. I'm going to go ahead and set up my Wi Fi. Wi Fi is connected. And we're going to continue with the installation. Download updates while installing Ubuntu? Sure, why not? Install third-party graphics software? Sure, why not? OK, we're going to go with Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. We're going to click Continue. Now, this is the part where you have to be very, very careful. Uh, Linux describes disks as SDA, SDB, SDC, things like that. Uh, it might be HDA, HDB, HDC if you have regular hard drives instead of SSDs um, or SATA or whatever. So you have to make sure that you get the right disk. If you don't get the right disk, then you're going to be erasing your Mac OS X or your Windows. So if you are unsure, I recommend that you actually physically remove the Mac OS X or Windows disks from the system. Uh, just pull the SATA cable and or the power cable and uh, run this installation with only one disk in the system. However, another way that you can do it is if you've got a fresh SSD, 
you can just look at each disk and see if it already has uh, a partition available on it. So this says four partitions will be deleted, so I don't want to delete that one. This one has no partitions, SDB. SD, SDC has three partitions. So in my case, I can be reasonably sure that SDB is the disk that I actually want to use. So I'm going to click Install Now, and hopefully it won't wipe out my Mac OS X or Windows 10 installations. Okay, and so this is a confirmation saying that it's going to write some partitions, uh, ESP, EXT4, and swap. I believe this ESP is actually an EFI partition for UEFI. So we're going to click Continue. I'm going to pick New York, East Coast. All right, we're going to click Continue. And at this point, you can page through these interesting little infographics if you want, or you can just wait. We'll speed this up so that things go by quickly. Okay, so at this point I'm going to remove the USB key from the back of the computer. It is now removed. Okay, and when we reboot, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the BIOS, and I'm going to make sure that my Clover bootloader is uh, the disk that gets booted, because I think uh, last time I did this, the BIOS automatically picked this new Ubuntu disk, and that's not what I want. So I'm just going to hit restart now. Okay, and we're going to go over to BIOS, boot option, and you can see that Ubuntu is set to the primary boot option. That's not what I want. I want Clover set. So I believe Clover is this top one here but it, it might take a little bit of experimentation to figure out which drive you actually want to boot. So then we're going to save and exit. There we go. Okay, now we've got our Windows partitions and we've got our Mac OS X partitions, but we don't have any Ubuntu partitions. We're going to have to boot into Mac OS X and tell Clover that it needs to be able to read Linux partitions as well. So we're going to do that now. If you have a different bootloader, you're not using Clover, then you'll do something else. But if you're following along with this guide, then you're using Clover. Had to disconnect my VR headset. Sometimes it doesn't show up the, uh, the login prompt when VR is connected. Okay, so log in. I have my Clover configurator in my uh, little bar down here. If you uh, need to go get it, go get it. Download it from the internet. You know, I'm not gonna cover that process. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to mount the EFI partition. So we click that button, then we click Mount EFI Partition. And then this is a, a frustrating process of guesswork. Uh, I'm not sure which one it's on, so we're going to try them all until we get one that works. So that looks like it worked, but let's try the Import button and see if we can find it. I don't see an EFI partition here, so that was probably not the correct partition. That was probably the Ubuntu partition, so we'll try the next one. Um, unexpected disk, and the last one. Third time's the charm. And we'll try the import button here. There we go, there's our EFI partition. Clover, and load up the config list. Okay, so now we have our old Clover configuration loaded. Close that. So we're going to click on GUI, and then we're going to check the Linux checkbox under Scan. And so this will allow Clover to uh, read Linux partitions, Linux UEFI partitions. And then we're going to click Export, Save. And then we're going to exit Clover Configurator. It's going to complain. Oh, it didn't complain. OK. And then we're going to reboot. This time it goes straight into Clover because we changed the boot order in the BIOS, which is good. Okay, and magically we have a Linux EFI partition this time, so we're going to boot into that. However, I think we're going to have to hit escape very quickly as soon as we boot into this because we need to change the, uh, the boot flags. So we're going to hit this and then escape. Okay, we're in grub. Oh, I hit escape too many times. Let's try that again. Maybe it'll automatically go into the boot menu for Grub. Yeah, there we go. Okay, 
So what we want to do now is uh, we've still got this NVIDIA card in the system and it's going to keep us from booting properly unless we change something. Okay, and so we're going to hit E here to edit this top entry. And we're going to go down to Linux. And we're going to hit the end key on the keyboard to get to the very end. And where it says quiet splash here, we're going to backspace that. And we're going to, re we're going to replace that with no mode set. No mode set, all one word. And then we're gonna hit F10 to reboot. And this will allow us to boot into Ubuntu with our NVIDIA card. I'm gonna put in our password here. Log in and we'll connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, we're connected. And that's it, we've got a, uh, a Linux system. However, we still need to set up the NVIDIA drivers so that we have a, a nice um, accelerated NVIDIA driver. So what I usually do for that is I go to update, software and updates. It's one of these two, I think it's this one. And then I click on other software, no. Additional drivers, let it search. Okay, and this is where you can click using NVIDIA binary driver. And then you can click apply changes and it'll install the NVIDIA driver for you. Okay, we'll go ahead and restart. And this time we shouldn't have to put in anything special to boot into Linux, hit enter. Everything looks a little bit nicer because we've got a nicer graphics driver now. Okay, and at this point I would just uh, do the same thing and I would make sure that I install some updates. Uh, looks like it might do that automatically. I think every, every Linux user should probably become pretty familiar with the terminal if they can help it. And I like to pin that to the launcher so that I can just restart it right there. All right, cool stuff. So that's a fully functional Ubuntu Linux system at this point. Um, hope you found this video interesting or useful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button down below. Uh, if you have any questions about this installation, please feel free to ask down in the comments section down below. I usually respond pretty quickly. I have a couple of links down there for the hard drive that I'm using, the SSD, uh, and also additional cables for the power supply and SATA cables for the hard drive because this, this particular case that I'm using, the Vengeance, the Corsair Vengeance C70, only came with enough cables for two hard drives, not three. So uh, links down below the video in the description. I'll probably be making a few more videos about uh, various things on Linux in the future. Um, VR in Linux, for example, with Steam VR and also some GPU mining for you uh, cryptocurrency people. So stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.